Hi there, my name is Cody Mack, and today we're going to go over the five things you need to know about debris lurking in your hydronic systems. The first thing you need to know is that debris is normally a symptom, and chances are actually really good that the real problem is actually going to be oxygen. Most of your debris will result from ferrous metal flaking off and corroding and getting into that fluid stream. This debris can actually be microscopic in size and is caused by sustained concentrations of oxygen chemically reacting with the metal. So even if your heat or chilled water source is entirely made of stainless steel or aluminum, other system components are commonly made of ferrous materials like iron and steel. This includes things like circulator volutes, expansion tanks, pressure vessels, radiators, all very typical examples. For commercial applications, this list will also include iron pipe and flange components such as balancing valves and strainers. Now, even with high concentrations of oxygen, corrosion can be kept in check. Your first thoughts may be leaning towards chemicals, but before you consider chemicals, there is a simpler way which takes into account another factor, the water's conductivity. If the water can be made non-conductive, then corrosion, which is an electrochemical phenomenon, will not occur. It's a lot like your car. Even if you've got a really strong battery in that car, if one of those cables gets disconnected, the car's just not gonna start. So how is water made non-conductive? If the fill water has minimal amounts of dissolved solids, the conductivity will naturally decrease on its own. This is because the dissolved solids become consumed by way of the corrosion process itself and or through the chemical reaction that causes scale to precipitate. This results in a very thin, non-problematic layer of oxide or scale forming on the surfaces and any further reactions are going to be disabled. The water has now become dead and the system fluid is now very stable. A great option to kind of help along this process is to actually demineralize the water, and it's also known as deionizing. This removes all the dissolved solids and electrically charged ions that allow for conductivity. This is a great way to disconnect your car's battery. Now that we know that air is going to be the most common culprit causing debris, a high quality air separator is going to be one of the best things that we can add to any hydronic system. As previously noted, when it comes to oxygen, it's going to be those sustained high concentrations that are something that, those are going to be what you want to avoid. Even with conductive water, corrosion can be kept at bay by limiting that duration of high concentration or by maintaining concentrations at very low levels. So where does the oxygen come from in a closed loop system? Oxygen can come by way of osmosis through piping like PEX, for example. It can also come dissolved in fresh makeup water as well. Uh, say, for example, if you are doing your blowdowns on your strainers and you're bringing in fresh makeup water. But the highest concentrations you'll have, though, are actually during the initial fill of an empty air-filled piping system. So a well-designed coalescing type automatic air separator placed appropriately in the system where the temperature is going to be at its highest and the pressure is going to be at its lowest is going to be your best tool to quickly reduce the initial high concentration and continue to maintain low levels for the life of the system. So what about non-ferrous debris? Scale is going to be a great example of this. Water with dissolved magnesium and calcium will cause scale to form on the hottest surfaces in your system. Once this happens, pieces of scale can actually pop off due to expansion and contraction and settle in your heat exchangers or actually anywhere else in your system, for example. Other common non-ferrous debris includes copper shavings, sand, silica, thread tape, pipe dope, solder, you name it. These things can all be just as problematic as ferrous debris. So magnetic filters can do a great job of capturing ferrous debris, but they do not address non-ferrous particles. A two-in-one separator that protects against both ferrous and non-ferrous debris is what you should be looking for to protect your vital and very expensive system components. The last thing I want to touch on is actually going to be chemicals. While very necessary in certain situations, they may best be viewed as a redundancy. One particular application where chemicals are a requirement is going to be snowmelt systems using glycol to prevent freezing. But the thing everyone seemingly forgets is that water chemistry can be very complex. Adding chemicals to a system in the right concentration and at the right time takes experience and skill. Chemicals should be checked and maintained to keep your system operating at its peak and prevent breakdowns and fouling of components. In certain situations, the fluid can actually turn acidic and even accelerate corrosion. Properly maintained chemicals are not going to cause harm to the system and can provide added insurance against corrosion and or scaling, 
especially in systems in less than optimal design. So what I want you to take away from this is that chemicals are a commitment and certainly have the potential to create more problems than they prevent. So thanks for joining us today on another episode of the five things you need to know. Again, my name is Cody Mack. We hope you tune in for the next one.